Time for Harvey's Hot Takes with our friend Brian Hayes. Each week we ask Brian to dish out hot takes as hot and delicious as a Harvey's original burger. And the entire crew had Harvey's for dinner tonight and they are loving it. They loved it. Brian, we had Pierre Lebrun on the show earlier to talk about the all the smoke surrounding the potential relocation of the Arizona Coyotes to Salt Lake City. But the other angle to this story that we didn't get to talk about with Pierre and I was hoping to talk about with you is the fact that once again... It appears that Quebec City is on the outside looking in when it comes to expansion or relocation, despite the fact that they have an NHL-ready arena. Yeah, it sure sounds like it's moving in that direction, Jay. And naturally, this drives me crazy because Canada gets overlooked again for the southern United States. Batman cannot get enough of the southern U.S. And I know it's worked in certain areas, but Salt Lake City is not Vegas. Vegas is truly one of the most unique cities around the world. It blew up. The NFL's there. The NBA's going there. Major League Baseball's going there. This is Salt Lake City. Was Des Moines not available? Sioux <laughs> Falls? I mean, let's get serious here. Salt Lake City has no history of sports outside of the Utah Jazz, who are there first. It's their building, which if this happens quickly, they're going to be playing in a basketball ready building it's going to be better than a university arena but not much better and i hate the fact that quebec city has been waiting for the nhl to return for a long time and they invested in the nhl they said we're ready and again this is relocation this is not expansion my understanding is expansion will cost even more relocation means you prove to the nhl you can help them get out of a bind i get it salt lake city's doing that this new prospective owner's got a lot of money, but Quebec City's got a rich history. They love hockey. I don't know if you can say that about Salt Lake City. I know you can say that about Quebec City. I think you could say that about a second team in Toronto or in the greater Toronto area. And it's the NHL just going back to the well. They may look back to Atlanta, even if and when they leave Arizona, they're going to immediately try to make that work again. Salt Lake City, Phoenix slash Arizona, Atlanta. The fact that they are ahead of the curve uh, on top of Quebec City, a second team in Toronto, maybe somewhere in the prairies up here. Canadians love the NHL. They support the NHL. They will always support the NHL. If the team's good, if the team's mediocre, if the team's bad. You cannot say that about a lot of American markets, certainly not Southern American markets. And now Salt Lake City, uh, it, it really, really bothers me. And I think I can speak for a lot of Canadians when I say this. I wish the NHL would snap out of this and actually look towards where all the fans are. The real fans, they're up here in Canada. They're certainly in Quebec City. The rink is waiting for them. Make it happen, Batman. Make it happen, NHL. I love it. Well said, my friend. Masters time once again. Brian, I know you're excited about it. Tiger Woods, the five-time champ, 48 years old, a lot of tread on the tires, injuries. Can barely get around the course, to be perfectly honest. As you know, Brian, I know you guys have been talking about it on the radio all week. Uh, you know, but five years ago, he shocked the world, right? He shocked the world, and he won it at Augusta. Is it at all realistic to expect that Tiger could turn back the clock at almost 50 years old and win his sixth green jacket? I don't believe it is to actually win the championship. I think Tiger's chasing the cut, not a green jacket here, not the championship. I think we need to be realistic. This is a guy that barely plays anymore. His body is incredibly beaten down. And the weather is not likely to help him. As you know, Jay, he goes out late on Thursday, early on Friday. They have basically already shut down Thursday morning, or it looks like it's trending in that direction, which is going to push tee times back. That means he's likely not going to get full 18 in on Thursday. That sets up for a potential disaster for Tiger Woods because he might have to play 24, 28, 30, 32, maybe 36 or close to it on Friday just to make the cut. I'm not sure his body can hold up, but... It is the mystique of Augusta National. It is Tiger Woods. He knows that place like the back of his hand. If he can walk, if his body can hold up, I believe he can make the cut. He's going for his 24 straight made cut. That's going to break a new record. We've never seen that before at the Masters. And I think he can find a way to work his way around the course. And I think if he gets to the weekend, that's simply bonus coverage of Tiger Woods. I think we need to start changing our mentality i know we keep hearing from him every single time he shows up at a major or any tournament for that matter he says the right things early in the week i believe i can win if everything comes together i think we need to move the goalposts here this guy can make the cut and give us extra golf and the idea of him playing on sunday at augusta where it's supposed to be beautiful weather on saturday beautiful on sunday i know it sounds hokey 
but he is worthy of it. He's one of the truly great athletes of all time. I know he wants to win a major. It would be an incredible story. It would obviously be probably the, the sports story of 2024 with all due respect, Salt Lake City possibly getting an <laughs> NHL team. But I just want to see him make the cut. And I believe he can because he's mastered this course. If he can get off the tee, if he can roll a few putts, weather concerns me. The field's great. I'm pulling for Tiger. Let's just keep it honest here. Yep. Let's let's just be clear. Make the cut. That's what I'm rooting for right now when it comes to Tiger. And you can see the Masters on TSN and TSN Plus. You know, just like Harvey's has been serving up Canadians for 65 years. This guy, Brian Hayes, has been serving up hot takes since 1983. This same year, Peter Stastny racked up 124 points, and Dale Hunter racked up 206 pims for the Quebec Nordiques. Bring him back, Gary. Thanks, Brian.